chair I got on my back represents my past. It's the if only chair. If only XYZ hadn't happened in my life, then I could be happy, successful, etc. If only my dad hadn't been an alcoholic, I could have been something. You ever hear people say stuff like that? If only I had studied something different in school and taken a different career path. If only, if only I had joined a different company. If only I hadn't taken out that subprime mortgage, I wouldn't be in so much trouble right now. If only we had chosen, you know, a different strategy last year. Do you know people like this? You can tell because they walk up and down the hallways. They're kind of, this, this is a heavy burden. So they're always kind of hunched over. Not a lot of life in their eyes. And some people, their whole life, anything negative that's ever happened to them, it sticks to them like Velcro. Now others of us pick up this chair. It's just as heavy, but it goes in the other direction. That's the chair of the past. This is the chair of the future. This is the what-if chair. And boy, do you guys got some what-if chairs you could pick up now. What if that Kaplan commitment thing puts me under? What if I just can't hit my numbers trying to do that Kaplan commitment? What if you know, two-thirds of my students decide after four weeks they're out of there and I haven't got a dime, but yeah, I got a lot of expenses going out? What if, what if those regulations you know, are even more severe than we think? What if they put us out of business? You know, a lot of the what-if questions are reasonable questions, but you know you're carrying the chair when you begin to respond emotionally as if the event has already happened. A double whammy looks something like this. And by the way, this example is true for men or women. Now, we pick up this chair and go, ah, oh, if only my spouse hadn't left me. <laughs> then we get thinking about it. Pick up this chair and go, uh-oh, what if they come back? <laughs> And we're burdened. And we're burdened. And Beth, I can say, Beth, come on up here right now and give me a golden opportunity. Give me a ring. Beth, give me a golden ring of opportunity. She could put that ring right in front of my nose. I can't do a thing about it unless I do what? I got to let go of the chairs. Matter of fact, one reason we pick these chairs up is because they make us feel safe. I pick up this chair, it becomes like a weapon. You know, I've, you know I, 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 had, I, I had a spouse one time that really did me wrong. I had a boss one time that really did me wrong. I'm never going to let that happen again. So I got this chair here, you see, and I'm, I feel very powerful with this chair. Come on, somebody give me a hug. Just try, just try to give me a hug. <laughs> but if I put the chair down, Gary, you tell me to put the chair down, now I'm vulnerable. My gut's revealed again. I could get hurt again. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. But you got to, you got to. At the end of the day, this chair, you've got to ask yourself, who's it harming? What good is it doing? 